It's time for Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Well, we're going to remedy that right now. This is Wretched Radio. It wouldn't be convicting if it weren't Paul Washer. Paul Washer, who is, well, let's just say temporarily sidelined by God because he had a very massive heart attack and it laid him out for well over a year. His health was showing that he was struggling two years ago at the G3 conference. Nevertheless, he soldiered on and he delivered a whiz-banger, but he had a heart attack. God must have known better that he wanted Paul on the sidelines. Otherwise, Paul wouldn't have had a heart attack. Now, would he? But he did, and he has now returned to the pulpit. This is his first sermon. Where else but at the G3 conference? The subject was missions, and I got to tell you something. This one is a bit of a scorcher, which is, I don't know if you realize this, but I I, I looked it up. A washer is actually an old Latin name for convicting preacher. Paul Washer talking about missions at the G3 conference. Brace yourself. When I look around me today and I see so many silly men (laughs) developing so many impotent and silly strategies of missions. I have to believe that all those strategies together are not as powerful as one saint praying, as one saint preaching. That's Paul Washer. Sorry, do you mind if we just enjoy this together one more time? Because it's Only Paul Washer who talks like this. When I look around me today and I see so many silly men. That's it. That's the only part I wanted to hear right there. (laughs) Developing so many impotent and silly strategies of missions. I have to believe that... (laughs) Paul Washer, who knows a little something about missions, he heads up a missions organization. He has been to Peru. He was a missionary in Peru. And he sees the great need for missionaries. And yet, the type of missionaries that he is seeing mostly are not on mission the way Moses was. God is saying, Moses, you better listen to me. I don't need your cleverness, Hmm. your wisdom your pragmatism, your inventions. I didn't ask you to draw up these plans with me. I did this apart from you in my own eternal counsel with my son. You make sure you follow the pattern precisely. Now let me ask you a question. What's more important in the economy of God? A stone, ta- a, a, a cloth and fur tabernacle? or his church that he is building. If God would warn a man about a building, how much more does God warn us about caring for his bride? I'm guessing a lot would be the right answer. Go through your Old Testament, the Levitical system, the building of the tabernacle, the traveling temple, if you will, the meticulous details. Why? Sometimes we read through our Old Testament, specifically eh, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and you think, oh, with the detail, I get it already. Why would God put so many details about the design of the tabernacle? Because it's important to follow God's plans for building that building. How much more important is it for us to follow the plans of building the actual church, which is Not just a building, and yet there are so many rogues who go off the reservation and they decide, yeah, we're going to build this thing the way that we see fit. Imagine a king. He has a bride that he loves with all his heart, all his heart. She's precious to him. Oh, he makes her eloquent, makes her beautiful, dresses her in the finest, purest, whitest, linen. He loves her. He spends his day admiring her, but he has to go on a long, a long journey. So he calls you in as a steward. He calls you in as a steward. He grants you the privilege to care for his wife, and he carefully constructs a document before you. 
This is what I want you to do with my wife. This is what I want you to do with my wife. This is what I want you to do with my wife. But then what happens? The king goes on a long journey and he stays gone for a while. And you notice that the people are becoming disloyal to the king. You notice that they're no longer really attracted to the queen. She's so, I don't know. Well, she's just not modern. She's not, she's not what the people want today. So you get a great idea. You strip her of her white linens. You paint her face and dress her like a prostitute. And you, you parade her before carnal men in order to draw them back into loyalty with the king. Mm -hmm. When the king returns, what will he do with you? He will kill you. And that's exactly what many pastors are doing today. That's exactly what many church planters are doing today. They're dressing up the church so that she will be pleasing not to godly folk, but to carnal folk in hopes of bringing them back into the kingdom. The king never gave you such a decree. Never. She belongs to him. She is precious to him. And we are to be jealous for her to the point of fighting. Jealous for her. The bad boys of Easter. That was an actual church sign advertising their Easter service. The bad boys of Easter. That is what Paul Washer is talking about. Now, again, the context here is missions, but it's also about building the church, which is what missions proper is about. Going on missions of mercy, that's fine, but a missions trip is not merely digging a well. It might involve that. It might be helping them, teaching local people how to plant crops for sustainable goods. All good, but that's not missions. Missions is going to build the church, not just preaching the gospel, but to build the church. Nevertheless, that is a stinging criticism of all of the people here and pretty much in the West. These are men who think that the bride needs to be fancied up a little bit. The queen needs to be made a little prettier. Her style... It's not in vogue. Remember Great Britain? I, I don't know why. I, th I think I saw this within the last few months. It was, it was a, a little bit of an inside into what happened at Buckingham Palace, inside of the royalty, when Princess Di died. And the queen just was not considered modern. She was trying to run it the old way, you know, mourning privately, not wearing her emotions on her sleeve, just dealing with it quietly. Now, there are other things involved. I, I grant you that. But it was a clear presentation that the old way of doing royalty, that's passe, daddy-o. You got to get up to speed. So what did she do? She adjusted to stay in power, to stay popular. And it worked. But she has no power. And the same thing is true with the church. You can make her awfully large. You can get it to be really big, but it has no power. Why? Because there is no real preaching going on. Instead, you get the bad boys of Easter. Paul Washer at the G3 conference encouraging you, if you are involved in missions in any way, shape, and form, to please make sure that your missionary activity isn't just going to preach the gospel. That's nice. It's not just going to... to administer vaccinations. That's nice. But missions is church planting. Missions is this. One biblical church sending out elder qualified men to plant another biblical church. And those elders that send those men out do so with fear and trembling. And the one who goes out deals with the bride of Christ with fear and trembling. If just this one thing was believed in seminaries hmm. and in missiology departments, it would transform everything. Being sent, going to build the church. Your doctrine. Is your doctrine worth exporting or should it be quarantined? Oh. I want you to know 
You can be a cup of blessing, you can be a cup of hemlock. By and large, in the recent decades, our doctrine has been like a cup of hemlock to the nations. Well, isn't that Paul Washer like? <laughs> I'll tell you the church that's growing the fastest, it's that NAR nuttiness that pervades so much activity overseas. Where's it coming from? The U.S. of A. And furthermore, I, I this this is not a commentary on the social justice issue as much as it is a commentary on overseas Christians scratching their heads at the conversation that we're having. It is a uniquely Christian dialogue that is taking place. And the world watches, for better or for worse. American Christianity exports a lot of stuff. Is it blessing or hemlock? Paul Washer continues next on Wretched Radio. Wretched. We're hip, we're technologically savvy. Would you please join us in liking, subscribing, or sharing this video?